outward impediment why I should not join, charge you on your souls to utter. Know you any hero? None, my lord. Uh, know you any I dare make his answer, none. Or what men dare do, what men may do, what men daily do, not knowing what they do. Oh no, interjections, why, then some be of laughing as ah ha he. <laughs> stand by thee, stand thee by, friar, father, by your leave. When you with free and unconstrained soul, give me this maid, your daughter, as freely son as God did give her me. And what have I to give you back whose worth may counterpoise this rich and precious gift? Nothing. Unless you render her again. Sweet Prince, you learn me noble thankfulness. Fair Leonardo, take her back again. Give not the shrine horn to your friend. She's but the sign and semblance of her honor. Behold how like a maiden she blushes here. Oh, what authority and show of truth can cunning sin cover itself withal? Comes not that blood as modest evidence to witness simple virtue? Would you not swear all that you see her that she were a maid by these exterior shows? But she is none, she knows the heat of a luxurious bed. Her blush is of guiltness, not modesty. What do you mean, my lord? <laughs> oh. Not to be married, not to knit my soul to an approved wanton. Dear my lord, if you, in your own proof, have vanquished the resistance of her youth and made defeat of her virginity, I know what you would say if I had known her. You will say that she did embrace me as a husband. So, and so extenuate the forehand sin. No, Lena, I never tempted her with word too large. But as a brother to a sister, show bashful sincerity and comely love. And seemed I ever otherwise to you? Out on thee coming! Or seeming different. I will write against it. You seem to me as Diane in her orb, as chaste as is the bud ere it be blown. But you are more intemperate in your blood than Venus. Or those pampered animals that rave, rage, and savage sensuality. Is my lord well that he doth speak so wide? Sweet prince, why not speak you? What should I speak? I stand dishonored. I should not not to make my dear friend to a common stale. Are these things spoken or do I have a dream? Sir, they are spoken and these things are true. This looks not like the natural. True! Oh God! Leonardo, let me move one question to your daughter, and by that fatherly and kindly power that you have in her, bid her answer truly. I charge thee do so, as thou art my child. Oh, God, defend me. How am I beset? What kind of catechizing call you this? To make you answer truly to your name. Is it not Hero? Who can blot that name with any just reproach? Mary, that can be Hero. Hero so cannot blot out Hero's virtue. What man was he taught? Man, was he talked with you yesternight out at your window betwixt twelve and one? Now, if you are made answer to this, I talked with no man at that hour, my lord. Why well, then you are no maiden, Leonardo? I'm sorry you must hear. Upon mine honor, myself, my brother, and this grievous count did see her, hear her at that hour last night, talk with the ruffian at the chamber window, who hath indeed most like a liberal villain. Here hast thou been, if thy, if half thy hour graces had been placed on thy thoughts and counsels of thy heart. Fare thee well, most foul, most fair. Farewell, thou pure in piety and in pious purity. For thee I'll walk up all gates, all the gates of love, and on my eyelids shall conjecture hang, and turn all beauty into thoughts of harm, and never shall it be more gracious. Hath no man's dagger here a point for me. Why, how now, cousin, wherefore sink you down? Come, let us go. These things come thus to light smother her spirits up. <laughs> How doth the lady? Dead, I think. Help, uncle. Hero, my hero. Uncle, Signor Benedict. Oh, Friar. Oh, is that? <laughs> oh, fate, take not, take not away that heavy hand. Death is a fairest cover for her shame. That may be wished for. How now, cousin hero? Have comfort, lady. You can come around. Okay. Right. So Where for? Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. ladies. <laughs> ladies. Wherefore? Why? Doth not, doth not that earthly thing cry shame upon her? Could she here deny the story that's printed in her blood? Do not live, hero. Do not open thine eyes. For did I think that thou wouldst die quickly? Thou, I think, thou, I, my, thought I thy spirits were stronger than thy shames. 
my self wit on the reward approaches. Strike at that life. Grieved I, I have but one. Tried me for thy frugal nature's frame. Oh, one too much by thee. Why had I won? Why was thou ever thy lovely in thine eyes? When, why had I not, with a charitable hand, took up the beggar's issues at my gates, who smirched such and murdered infinite? I might have said no part of it is mine. The shame derives itself from unknown loins, but mine, and I was proud of mine so much that I myself was to myself not mine, valuing her. Oh, she is fallen in a pit of ink that the wide sea have dropped to you to wash her in again, and salt to little feet, which may give season to her foul tainted flesh. Sir, hear me a little, for I have only been silent for so long and given way into this course of fortune. By noting of the lady, I have marked a thousand apparitions to start her in her face, a thousand innocent shames and angel whiteness beat away those blushes, and in her eye there hath appeared a fire to burn the errors that these princes hold against her maiden truth. Call me a fool, trust not my reading nor my observations, which with experimental seal doth warrant the tenor of my book. Trust not my age, my reverence, calling, nor divinity. If this sweet lady lie not guiltless here under some biting air, Briar, it cannot be. Thou seest all the grace ha that she hath left. Is that she will not add to her damnation? A sin of perjury, she not denies it. Why seekest thou to then cover with excuse that which appears improper of naked? Speak towards any creature. Refuse me, hate me, torture me to death. There is some strange misprison in the princess. Uh, two of them have the very bent of honor. And if their wisdom be misled in this, the practice that lies in John the Bastard, whose spirit is foiled in front of the I know not. If they speak but the truth of her, those ha these hands shall tear her. If they wrong her honor, the proudest of them shall hear, shall well hear of it. Time hath not yet so dried this blood of mine, nor my bad hath wrecked me so much of friends. But they shall find awaken in such kind, both strength of lamb and on her behalf change slander into remorse. That is some good, but for not for that I dream on this strange course, but on the travail look for greater birth. She dying, as it must so be maintained, upon the instant that she was accused, shall be lamented, pitied, and excused of every hearer. For if it so falls that we have prized not the worth, whilst we enjoy it, but being lacked and lost, why, then we rack the value. Then we find the virtue that possession would not show us while it was ours. Hi, boss. Um, but...